Good evening, CCM Fallowfield. It is great to have you here with us. Nice to see some names on the screen here as well. Um, I'm going to be leading us through the service tonight. Um, we're going to have some fun together on Zoom, as we have been the last couple of weeks. Um, so we've got a pre-record of worship from Andy and Claire Wisdom. We've got Rosie um, speaking to us this evening, which I'm really excited about. I know she shared it this morning as well. Um, we're going to come together at the end. We're going to have a bit of prayer. Um, I'll update you on some things as we go along throughout the service. Um, but we're going to get kicked off straight away with a little bit of pre-recorded worship from Andy and Claire. Um, and then I will see you back on here to run you through a few things that are happening in the life of the church at the moment. So I'm going to mute myself um, and disappear again for a second. Um, and we will kick off our service with a little bit of worship.
Ah, oh, how lovely to see Andy and Claire on the screen and sing along with them. Uh, for those that don't know Andy and Claire, Andy leads uh, the morning service of CCM um, and is an all-round legend, as is Claire. So um, let me tell you about a few things that are happening at the moment. So you may have guessed or you may have seen on various text messages and on our social media that today is our first of our November Give Big Sundays. Now, if we're in church, I would encourage increase appreciate if people were like yay um so i'm just going to pretend that you're doing that because i can't see any of you um but yes we've just all oh, anush just put that helpful graphic up for me there so we are giving away to three brilliant um organizations this year so one of them will be the barnabas center and um, they are a fantastic charity that we really like to support who um are out on the streets and supporting those experiencing homelessness and those that are vulnerable in our city. There's also the Oasis Centre who um, is run by somebody who is a close friend of CCM, Victoria Armstrong. She goes to another one of our sites. And again, she's just reaching out, her and her group um, of amazing staff team of volunteers are reaching out to local people in the Gorton area of Manchester. So it'd be great to put some money behind them as well and then also we heard from our friend Andre Bondarenko last week um, who is a pastor over in the east of Ukraine we'll also be giving money um, to our friends over there as well so this is the first of our big give Sunday big give give big my goodness I'm stumbling over my words tonight this evening um so it's the first of our give bigs this week so I really encourage you um to have a think about what you might be able to put into that um I think Anoush was saying earlier that he's going to pop the link to give um into the zoom chat it'll also be on text messages I presume and on our Facebook group as well so if you haven't already done that have a little bit of a think about it um, and pop some money in there if you can and be praying about what you can give to that um, also as usual I'm encouraging everybody to get involved in community um, now more than ever we want to make sure that we are reaching out to people that we are looking out for you we're nearly halfway through our lockdown now I think more than halfway actually um, but we still want to be keeping in touch with you and keeping community strong as a part of this church so please if you haven't already give us your details get in touch with us and um, we would love to connect with you take you for a one-to-one -one walk have a chat with you whatever um, and just make sure that you're connected with the church and within that if you're not part of a community group I really encourage you to get involved with one they're a great way to open the bible together get to know a smaller group of people uh, within the church and have an opportunity to pray together every single week and um, so if you're not part of one of those and you would like to be get in touch with sim sim tim at ccm.org.uk uh, drop him an email or ask somebody that you know in the church and we will happily let you know about what's going on with the community groups. Um, also, this week, we are trying to keep things fun and interesting. So there will be a pub quiz on Zoom this coming Friday. So for more details about that, keep an eye on your texts and on Facebook and Instagram, um, if that's something that you'd be interested in getting involved in. Um, as always, um, we're trying to keep things as normal as we possibly can. So next week, we are going to take communion together. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange, and you might be wondering how we're going to do that. Um, but just bear in mind for next week to have a little bit of bread or a cracker, whatever you fancy, and a bit of juice or a bit of wine, whatever. And we will do um, a communion together um just as we would if we were in a church service um so the reason that we'll do that is because we want to remember um christ's body and christ's blood that was shed for us and what that means and what um jesus's sacrifice for us means um so bear that in mind try and remember it and i've just spat quite a few things at you to remember um but i won't keep waffling on i will invite rosie to come and speak to us tonight i'm excited to hear from her i'm sure you all will be too so um, you will see me after Rosie has spoken to us, we'll come back together for some worship um, and then we'll pray together. So I'm gonna disappear now and invite Rosie up. Fab evening, everyone. Um, so we're continuing on this week with our series um, called Only Jesus and we've been in the book of Colossians. Um, and this week we're gonna be looking at chapter three verses 1 to 17 um, and I've titled my talk for today only Jesus is our blueprint for change 
And previous to this passage in Colossians 2, Paul's been addressing some Christians who are trying to follow a form of Christianity that they've sort of made up themselves. Um, and they've mixed it with a few old Jewish laws or some other spiritual ideas. And in this passage, Paul's basically just trying to straighten out their wrong ideas um, and tells them how they should really be living their lives. So he starts the passage um, by giving them some advice on what to think about and then tells them who they are in Christ and then gives them a detailed description of living as Christians. Um, but this passage isn't just like a list of rules or a telling off from Paul. I believe it's life giving instructions on how to have peace and experience the fullness of God. So I'll just read the passage before we get into it. Uh, it's from Colossians 3, uh, 1 to 17. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds of not things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is you, your life is, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old selves with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And what whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him so one of the first things um that i think we can take from this passage is that our transformation as christians starts in the mind um a study carried out by the huffington post that i found online has discovered that you and i will have around 50 to 70 thousand thoughts in one day that's a lot of thinking for me i feel like it's probably been um, a bit more than that during lockdown. Um, and when I read this statistic, it made me reflect a bit on what I think about, how much of my thinking actually is negative and worry infused and how much of my thinking glorifies God. Before I just get into my first point, I want to clarify that I'm going to be talking today about what we think about and how that affects us. However, I'm not qualified at all just to talk about um, diagnosed mental health disorders. So I'm just reiterating that I'm not talking about those today and don't wanna undermine people that do struggle with those things. Um, so Paul starts off his passage really clearly and boldly telling the church in Colossae to set their minds on things above and not on earthly things. We hear this little snippet, this line quoted quite a lot in Christian culture. So it can be really easy just to become a bit um, numb to it. But it's quoted so much because it's so amazingly important for us as Christians. Paul is saying that the best Christian living comes from minds that are completely fixed on Jesus. And he reiterates this idea by repeating it. He says, um, set your hearts on things above. And then again in verse two, he says, set your minds on things above. So this obviously means a lot to Paul, um, but why do we need to manage our minds? Firstly, because our thoughts completely control our lives. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Be careful how you think, your life is shaped by your thoughts. What we think about, what we worry about, what we fill up on and what we obsess over or fantasise over becomes our focus. And what we focus on becomes our life. It can be really easy to just let our thoughts run wild and make no attempt to control our minds because it just feels so impossible sometimes. Um, but Paul is saying here that not only is it possible, um, it's actually essential that we do. 
since going into another lockdown, I found it really hard to control where my mind goes and I can wake up in the morning feeling quite positive. Um, and within a few hours, my mind has taken me down some pretty dark routes. And my whole mood is completely affected and the day just becomes a write off. I'm no longer productive. I'm anxious. My mind feels like it's running around in circles and then um, hopelessness can set in. And this feeling of hopelessness um, is quite often a byproduct of what I'm thinking about, whether I'm aware of that or not. Um, we can very often think the mind and the heart are two separate things, um, but they're not. We often feel badly because we think badly. We all live in an age of anxiety and depression. If you don't struggle with these things personally, you'll definitely know someone who does. Our minds are so often really dark places of disarray and mess. And that's the result of living in the fallen world that we live in. So it's not surprising, really, and it's not surprising to God. I was speaking to um, a friend this week and she said, the thing you need to understand is that as a child of God, you actually have a right to mental freedom. Jesus wants us to think and feel well. Um, and that's really obvious here in the beginning of our passage in Colossians as well in Psalm 1. Um, it talks about a person who experiences the peace of God. Um, and, and this person is described to have a flourishing mind. It says in verses two and three, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law and on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. I would love to be a tree planted by streams of water. How peaceful does that sound? Everything this person does prospers that is massive there are absolutely no write-off days for this guy um but the psalm outlines that this is because he meditates or thinks on the law of the lord or the bible day and night so this guy is using up his fifty thousand thoughts on life-giving things when i first read this psalm about meditating on the bible day and night i was a bit frustrated because i was just like right am i supposed to become a nun then and just meditate read and pray all day and night long because sometimes that kind of i guess that's kind of what that psalm looks like it's saying um but it seems actually it's about just devoting time and space to it not necessarily 24 hours a day although i'm on furlough so i probably could do that um but making it the first thing you do when you wake up and the last thing you do before you go to sleep will allow God's words to take root in your mind. Reading the Bible and meditating on smaller chunks of it has been so, so helpful for me when I'm going through bouts of thinking and feeling badly. Um, committing to reading a chapter a day for a month could be so beneficial for your mind. The Bible says to seek peace and pursue it. Peace isn't something that will always just fall on us when, when we want it to, although God can do that. Um, but we must be active and vigilant about seeking peace. So what do we let into our minds? Um, what is it that we think about? And this has challenged me personally just to think about what I'm thinking about. Because um, we can spend all the time in the world praying um, or doing good things for others. But if our minds are still set on stuff around us and not on heaven then we cannot prosper like that guy in psalm 1 we cannot be transformed again roman 12 verse 2 says do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind we cannot live as this world lives um, and that transformation paul is saying starts in the mind so setting our minds on jesus and things above is our first piece of advice that paul gives us on how to be transformed and I think Paul starts off this passage um, talking about being transformed in the mind because he knows that that is the catalyst for us changing the way we live our whole lives. So this brings me on to my next point, which is that Jesus will make us look different than before. So the transformation and renewal of our minds should lead to a complete change in the way we live and we should look different as a result. And Jesus is our only route to doing this. As a teenager um, in secondary school, like quite a lot of teenagers, I was really trying to figure out who I was and what kind of image I wanted to project to people. Um, and in my spare time as like a younger teenager, this is actually the truth, I, um, I used to write short novels and was quite obsessed with Anne Frank and anything World War II related. Um, I was part of the school book club and lived pretty much in my own world most of the time. 
However, as you can imagine, like as I progressed further into secondary school, I started realizing that these things probably weren't that cool. And that if I wanted to have friends, I'd have to stop doing all those things and just probably start straightening my hair. So I suddenly decided that I needed a whole identity reconstruction. Um, so I ditched the war novels and did everything I could just to put on this new self. But what I noticed was that occasionally my old kind of geeky nature would slip out and it was hard to maintain all of the time. I didn't do a really good job at appearing any different to, to before. Um, I tried to, to change external things while still having that same personality and heart on me. Paul's saying here in the next part of our passage that um, we can't just dress up as Christians um, and hope that no one will notice the difference have a whole heart change he says put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature so our new selves should look so different to our old selves putting something to death is pretty final there should be no trace at all of our old way of life what a challenge this is to us now um i know there are areas of my life that show the tr transformative power of jesus and since i first became a christian in 2011 jesus has been transforming different areas of my life but I also know that there are still many traces and sin patterns of the old me that are still hanging around um I wonder what remnants of your old life are still hanging around now verse three of our passage says for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in this verse Paul is talking about the death of self and the rebirth of self so um if you're a Christian here you had an old self which was under the influence of sin and that died when you became a christian um, and the new self has been born and this new self is no longer a slave to sin now that all sounds really nice um but the trouble is it's really really just too easy um to go back to living as a slave to sin um, and that's because the invitations are absolutely everywhere um the pull to idolize things that aren't god whether that be money success or relationships the pull to gossip it, speak negatively or angrily is intense the pull to hold grudges and be bitter is extremely strong and these are just a few examples that Paul lists in verses 5 to 10 of things that we need to put to death however it's really important that we understand that, that this is not just um, a list of things that Paul is saying we must stop doing in order to be right with God Previously to this passage, as I mentioned earlier, Paul's been conveying the message that legalism and just trying to be better um, in our own strength is never going to change our hearts. We will get nowhere by simply trying to be better on our own. Whenever I've been stuck um, in a habit of doing the same wrong things over and over again, it's never been someone telling me to um, like you, you must really stop doing this and just be better, Rosie, that's led to change. It's been having an experience of the mercy and kindness of Jesus that's led me to want to see change in my own life. Um, so as we begin to choose to focus our minds on Jesus and what he's done for us by dying on the cross for us, eyes begin to be transformed and fruit starts to appear. We're able to put to death the old way of doing things and live in the fullness of all he has for us. So not only does Jesus help us get rid of all the mess and sin of our old lives, it is relationship and proximity with him that enables us to put on this new self and show his goodness to the world around us. A few years ago, um, when I was living abroad, I met this American girl called Susan, who I became really good friends. Um, and when I've been having a really hard time in that year, she just relentlessly showed me the character of God through her kindness and humility. And she herself had been living um, in the country for like three months longer than me um, and had experienced a really hard time of anxiety and was actually hospitalised at one point during her time away because of it. Um, and even despite having had a really hard few months herself, she persistently would just show up at my house with all this um, American chocolate that her mum had sent her um, and would just sit and listen to me for hours and just generally made me feel understood in a time when I was really struggling. And this sounds like a really naff and simple story, but actually this was such a powerful time for me um, in terms of learning about the character of God, that he is compassionate on us and what a responsibility we now have to show this character around us. Now, more than ever, our world needs a Susan. Our world needs people who are going to show the character of Jesus. Um, verse 12 of our passage says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, 
clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Paul gives us a list here of things that um, we should do as Christians. <clears throat> if you're a Christian and a believer in Christ, you are already united with, with Jesus. And he's, he's saying that now, as a response, here are the things that you should do. We can bring these attributes into our workplaces, our homes and our churches. Our world is so full of broken people who need um, the healing touch of Jesus. And we can bring that to them by putting on these attributes of our new selves. And Jesus forms us, um, therefore, into being fruitful Christians. So our transformation starts in the mind. Um, we're called to tell ourselves and we're called to put on the new self and now Paul's final message from this passage is that the gospel is what transforms the church so throughout this passage in Colossians we see that it's focusing on Jesus and the gospel that keeps us from straying away and not only does it keep us focused on the right thing um, it also keeps us united as a church verses 15 and 16 say let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. I love the way Paul refers to the church here as one body. He's pointing out the importance here of us understanding that community is key. Um, the first Christians really had this concept of community down. They understood the, the necessity of it. It says in Acts 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. This word fellowship in Greek apparently means koinonia, which means deep, raw and authentic relationship with each other. Um, and the first Christians lived um, where conversations push deeper than just sports, weather and fashion, but where we sit down with one another and really know one another. During lockdown, pursuing this sense of real community is even harder, I think, but all the more important. Even though it seems much easier sometimes to just think, oh, I'll just wait till after lockdown to join a community group or reach out to that person, because it's all pointless now anyway. Um, but it's even more crucial right now that we work hard at protecting our togetherness. So I'd encourage you just to be thinking about how you can keep yourself um, and others in community even now. And this fellowship um, is what marks the community of God. Verse 11 of our passage says, Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. We in the church are not marked by ethnicity, social status or gender, but we're marked by having Christ in us. Um, one common goal and that's what produces those actions that Paul's been talking about by spurring one another on um, and these verses point to how the gospel has the power to completely transform our church Paul's saying um, here's how knowing Jesus is actually going to change your whole community um, in encouraging each other challenging each other and thanking God together we are unified as we have one goal one of the key things as well in these verses is that Paul says that we must be challenging one another. Um, how prepared are we to push through our Britishness and challenge our friends when we see them slipping up? A few years ago, I remember a friend just really gently and kindly asking me a question back to something negative that I'd said about myself. And she just said, how do you think God feels about you saying that about his own creation? It wasn't um, belittling or patronising. She just really gently reminded me of an area that I needed to work on. And as a result, I was able to think more about it and, and pray about it on it. So we allow the word of Christ or the gospel to ooze out of us and define us as we share it in real community and encourage and challenge one another. And this is why it's so important to be um, a part of a community group, because it's in those contexts that we're able to help support and encourage one another. It's in those meetings with other Christians that we're giving the gospel um, a bit of airtime, essentially, and an opportunity to dwell in us, like the verse says. Um, Paul transforms our lives, um, not only individually, but it also has the power to create flourishing churches that are completely united. So to summarise, Paul's taught us to fix our eyes on Jesus, and that is what keeps us strong in him. He challenges us to put to death our old way of living and clothed with attributes of God's and finally, he reminds us the power of the gospel to transform our lives and our church. So I'd encourage you this week, to think about what you're thinking about. 
what truths about Jesus can you meditate on? What parts of your old nature are still hanging around, even though now you're a new creation? I'll just read from Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2 to finish. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him in the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, thank you very much for that, Rosie. Um, some really important things to be thinking about there. Um, we are going to have another song of worship now from Andy and Claire, and then we will come back together. Myself and Rosie and Alicia and McLean are going to join us as well, and we'll have a bit of time of prayer before we bring our service to an end and uh, then hang out together on Zoom. So um, I will let Anoush put the next song of worship back on, and then I will see you in a couple of minutes. Yes. 
brilliant. Right, um, I'll just invite Alicia and McLean to join me. If you guys could unmute yourselves and turn your videos on, that'd be wonderful if we can see you as well. I'll give you a second to do that. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna spend a little bit of time praying together now before we um, draw the service to a close. Um, so I will start us off whilst I'm waiting for Alicia and McLean to join us. Um, and then I will uh, tell you what's happening next. So yeah, Father God, I just thank you um, for your presence here with us this evening, Lord. God, I thank you that um, you've been with each and every person tonight in their homes, um, whether they've been um, worshipping alone or whether they've been with other people, Lord. I thank you that your presence dwells with us wherever we are. Lord, I pray that um, this week we would really be thinking about um, the things that Rosie was speaking about tonight, thinking about the thoughts that we have, Lord, and um, whether they come from you, whether they glorify you, whether they um, are true to what you say about us, Lord. And God, I pray that um, we would know your peace um, and your truth and your joy in this week, Lord. God, I pray um, for people who might be isolating or shielding, who might be unwell with COVID, Lord. I just pray that your Holy Spirit and your um, presence would be um, so tangible to them, that they would really know you close to them, Lord. Yeah, Father, I just pray that you would um, help us to reach out to each other and um, to encourage each other to be kind to each other in this time, Jesus. I thank you that um, you are always with us and that you are always a kind and loving father. Yeah, in your mighty name, amen. Heavenly Father, I just, um, yeah, I just praise your name today, Lord. I thank you that we can still gather here, even though it's over Zoom, Lord. I thank you that your presence is not um, barriered by technology or anything like that. And Lord, I thank you for what Rosie said to us tonight, Lord, I thank you that's so inspired by you. Um, and I just pray, I really pray for what Rosie was talking about with mental freedom, Lord. I thank you that's something that you can offer us and that you want to give us, Lord. And I, I just pray that where people really are struggling to find peace and to find that mental freedom, Lord, I pray that they can find it tonight. I pray that people will um, either feel that peace right there with them or they will have that um they will be able to seek it out, Lord. They'll be able to come to you and know that you are right there listening and you want to give us peace, Lord, and you want to just shower us in your love. And I, I pray that people will know that you are right there waiting for us and that you're not far away, Lord. And I just thank you that um, even though we do go through hardships, you don't you don't always um, sugarcoat the fact that we go through hardships, Lord, but through those hardships, we can still have that mental freedom and knowing that you are in control and that you bring us peace, Lord. And I just pray through this, hardship of lockdown that people will really feel that peace where um things don't seem to be going well there doesn't seem to be an end and things are uncertain lord i just pray that peace will be um the resounding theme from here on out lord that people will just feel a peace that they can't understand and a peace from you that will just trump everything else lord i just pay, pray that people tonight will be able to seek that out and to seek you out lord amen I think McLean is praying for us, but we can't hear him. I didn't know if it was just me. You're not on mute, McLean. I just don't know if it's your microphone. We can't hear you at all, I don't think. No? Oh, don't worry about it. Technology problems, eh? <laughs> um we're getting used to it with zoom aren't we um we'll try again next week mclean we'll see if we can get you get you mic'd up properly um, and we'll be able to hear from you um but um 
we will draw our service to a close there. It's been great to have everybody here, both on Zoom and on Facebook Live with us. Um, it would be great to see you again next week. We will be live once again, 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, please remember about it's, it's Give Big Sunday this week and it will be Give Big Sunday next week as well. So be thinking about that, be praying about that throughout the week. Um, and if you would like to stay on the call um, and have a little chat with everybody, we will kind of pause for a couple of minutes. You can go to the loo, you can get a cup of tea, whatever it is you want to do. Um, and then we will come back together and have a little bit of a chat. Um, but yes, if not, please feel free to leave the call now and it'd be fabulous to see you again next week. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week, everybody.